Hey, what's up guys? It's Dr. D Flow, and in this video, I'm gonna give an overview of selective laser sintering, or SLS for short. It's a fascinating 3D printing technology that is quite different from the filament or even resin 3D printers you may have at home. SLS printers are unique because they use a laser to heat and fuse powder in defined geometries. There are some really interesting benefits to using powder as the raw material instead of filament, but hold tight, we will get to that later. Let's walk through this quick animation to get a closer look at how powder can be transformed into complex and functional parts. The powder reservoir is lowered and filled with a thermoplastic powder, typically nylon. The particles that make up the powder are round and smooth. These features, among others, allow for the powder to be spread in a thin, dense layer, which is important for the success of an SLS print, as we will see. Prior to starting the print, the powder is heated just below its melting temperature through heating coils, and in some cases, infrared lamps. The powder is kept at this temperature throughout the print to make it easier for the laser to melt the powder because only a small amount of energy will be required and to prevent the part from warping due to temperature gradients. Once heated, the printing process commences. A powder spreader, such as a blade or roller, creates a thin, uniform layer on the build platform. Then a laser selectively heats up regions of the build area to melt the powder in a defined geometry. This process is repeated with the part getting taller after each layer. It should be clear that if there are voids or artifacts in the powder, that these flaws will translate directly to the part, resulting in poor mechanical properties or possible print failure. That's why smooth uniform layers are so important. When all goes well, uncentered powder will entirely encase the printed part. This means that support material is not required for SLS printing, and therefore nearly any geometry can be printed. The only restriction is that there needs to be enough space to remove the loose powder after the print. Being able to print without supports is a serious benefit of this printing process, but what are some other reasons to add SLS to your 3D printing portfolio? If we look closely at this SLS printed Benchy, it's very difficult to discern the different layers that make up this model. Not only is this great aesthetically, but this tight adhesion between layers is why SLS prints exhibit near isotropic mechanical properties. Put simply, these prints are strong in all directions, which is not the case for parts printed with filament, which will be weakest in the plane perpendicular to the layers. These superior mechanical properties allow nylon printed parts to be used directly as reliable end-use products. It's also easier to scale up production with the SLS platform. Because the laser is able to quickly scan across the build area, the most time-consuming step is preparing and spreading a new layer of powder. It's often as fast to print multiple parts simultaneously as it is to print a single part, as long as the number of powder layers remains the same. Combine this feature with a large build area, and SLS becomes one of the faster additive manufacturing technologies. There are of course drawbacks to this technique. The two biggest barriers for a hobbyist like myself are the mess and the cost. Every printed part will have to be removed from a cake of powder, just as the powder is capable of being spread thin layers within the printer, can also quickly coat your workshop in a layer of dust. Let's just say it's not the best 3D printer for a living space. There are integrated powder handling systems that can depowder parts and recycle the powder without the mess, but they are expensive. Up until recently, to afford an SLS printer, you'd have to take out a second mortgage just to have enough cash for the six-figure price tag. Today, companies like Formlab, Centratech, and Centerit are pushing the cost of these printers down, but turnkey systems still cost about as much as a car. If you're willing to trade your time for cost savings, then there are some DIY kits and open source plans available. I went one of these routes with the Centratech kit, which took over 30 hours to assemble, but I filmed and narrated the whole process. So definitely check out that video if you wanna learn more about the inner workings of an SLS printer. If you're determined to save as much money as possible, then check out open source designs like Luke Cunningham's OpenFuse SLS 3D printer, where you can source all the parts yourself and be involved with a great community. To conclude, SLS is a unique additive manufacturing technology with a lot of benefits, but a hefty price tag. If you're able to dish out some cash or put in the work to build your own, you can reap these benefits and make functional, lasting parts. I'll see you guys in the build video.